So the Schwarz Christoffel transformation takes the upper half of the Z plane and it maps it to a polygon, the interior of a polygon in the W plane. Now, when we say polygon, it's actually possible for this polygon to be what's called an open polygon. That is, it's, um, it has infinite area inside. So an example of an open polygon would be something which looks like this. Um, so really, it's, it's a polygon on the complex plane. And this you can regard actually as a triangle on the complex plane because this point goes to infinity, this point goes to the same point at infinity. So in fact, this is, this is just a triangle and would be an example of something you could do with the schwarz christoffel transformation. So it's actually very useful. Um, another example of an open polygon would be a sort of step like this. Again, this is a type of triangle on the complex plane because you've got um, uh, I say triangle, um, effectively this is the same side as this. Um, so, but uh, yeah, it's, it's a triangle, you've got three points. Uh, so yes, um, yeah, it's not, not quite, the, no, it's not the same side. Okay, so this is a triangle, you've got one, two, three sides. Uh, but this, this point goes to infinity. Um, and uh, yeah. So these examples are what are called open polygons and they tend to be um, actually what we tend to use the schwarz christoffel transform to, to uh, for most applications that they tend to be used for open polygons more useful. Um, okay so what is the actual transformation? It's somewhat complicated um, but we can it's not that difficult to prove as we'll see. So w is equal to w0 we'll come back to that a bit later plus alpha from z0 to z. Okay, so the w0 is actually simply um, f of z0. Um, okay, so what's inside the integral? So we're integrating with respect to big Z, and then it's big Z minus x1. I should mention that in the example I've drawn here, um, x5, so, so basically we have an n-sided polygon um, and in this case n is 5 in this example and x5, the xn, um, we always put it infinity for convenience um, so we can't see xn on this one, that's at infinity right so and then this is raised to the power uh, p1 and p1 is equal to phi 1, sorry, pi in general, is equal to phi i divided by pi. So the phi i are called the exterior angles of the polygon. So basically, as you go from point, the line uh, connecting, uh, well, okay, the line going into w1 to the next one, w2, then the exterior angle is the anti-clockwise angle that you need to turn when you go from this direction to this direction. Okay, so it's called the exterior angle, but that's okay. Okay, so as you go from W, the line joining W1 to W2 to the line joining W2 to W3, um, you end up going through turning anti-clockwise by an angle phi2. Okay, so that's where the pi come from, so p1 minus x2 plus p2 all the way up to z minus xn minus 1 um, pn1 um, obviously we couldn't have xn here because xn is xn is always infinity so we, we, we normally choose xn to be the point at infinity so we can't possibly have an xn in the formula Okay, and then, then we're done. That's, that's the integral. And we integrate with respect to big Z. So big Z is, is the dummy variable of integration. Um, the only technical thing is that 
um, except in special cases, these will not be integers, the PIs will not be integers, which means that you've got a function here which has a branch point at x1 and so on. Um, so you just, you just choose the branch cuts to lie um, in, in this direction, out, out of the way. So basically, um, everything's continuous in the, Z, in the upper z-plane, apart from at the points x1, x2, x3, x4, where you have branch points. So it's not, uh, not analytical of those, those single points. Um, it's important that the x1, x2, x3, x4 are all satisfy um, xi is less than xi plus 1. Okay, so that's about it. Um, okay, so the last thing is, well, what are, what are these alphas? Oh, I actually forgot. Got thing. So I've got the alpha. So the alpha is, can be any complex number. Um, what the alpha does is actually end up determining um, the size um, position. Well, these alpha and w end up determining the size. That, that's fairly obvious, um, I guess. So the w0 is going to shift the polygon around. Um, the alpha is going to determine how big the polygon is. Um, so that's all. Um, okay. 